Okay, so in this video I'm going to be going over the transaction CSV format in continuation with our discussion on the subscription CSV format and importing uh, automatically recurring subscriptions. Again, please use the uh, download sample here as a format starter for you. Okay, So let's go over the required columns first. Uh, username and email was covered in the previous video, same with product ID amount and total. So if you watched the previous video you know all you need to know to import this file with the required columns. However I will make note of something that's very very crucial. If you import a transaction CSV file without an expires at date you will be given users lifetime access. So what that means is you really should also include an expires at column kind of no matter what. You can have an expires at without a created at column um, present, but make sure that you have the expires at so that you're limiting the user's access appropriately. Everything else that we got, went over in the previous video applies to this, vid this um, transaction CSV file format as well, but let me clarify a few things. One essential element is this column. If you do not have a sub num column header, with the right subscription IDs that this transaction is supposed to belong to, you're not going to be associating the transaction with the subscription. You'll just create a one-time payment, or in other words, just a transaction that's not actually tied to anything. So it's important that you um, correctly add it or add this um, subscription ID here. And again, please reference the other video for what those common subscription IDs look like. Payment method um, is the exact same. Send welcome will send the welcome email. You can set it to one to send or zero to not send. Transaction number, um, let me clarify here. This is what a Stripe transaction number looks like. And with PayPal and authorized.net and other gateways, usually this is just a random string of numbers and letters. Whereas Stripe adds the CH underscore before that. For status, you're gonna wanna put complete the options here being pending, complete, or refunded. Um, defaults to complete if you don't enter in anything. So usually you'll be using complete for this column, um, but you can use others if, if needed. And then created at and expires at. As best practice, it's probably best that you have a created at date um, or column header here as well. You can leave it blank and it will default to today's created at date. Um, or you can enter in um, the actual create at date when the actual transaction happened. One important thing to note here is that if your rules in MemberPress are uh, drip rules, for example, this create at date is going to be very important because we calculate the drip feature based on the user's first transaction in the subscription. So if, for example, the user really paid you like a month ago, but you import the file and you put the create at date as today, then that drip sequence will calculate based on today instead of based on when the user actually paid you, which was a month ago. So that's the case where you would want to put um, the right created at date. And again, the expires at date is important. Now I'm going to go over the format for the dates again because this is a really common thing that we see people messing up with. Um, so you select those dates that you want to have formatted correctly because this format is not correct. This format right here, this is what we're looking for. Okay, so I'm actually just going to go ahead and copy and paste that unlike what I did last time. And going to highlight those fields, right click, format cells, come in here, and I'm just going to paste what I just got course making sure I remove those quote marks so that it shows up correctly and click OK and then that's gonna be the correct format and I well, I mentioned this in my one of the previous videos on this page but just make note that when you're saving your CSV file it has to be a Windows formatted CSV file I'm currently on a Windows device, so I don't necessarily I don't have to worry about that. But if you're using a Mac, for example, um, you have to make sure that you're saving it as a Windows formatted CSV file. Hopefully, we can get this changed 
sometime, but for now you need to use the Windows CSV comma delimited format, okay, to save it like that. One additional note about formatting with CSV files is that if I save the CSV file, right, and I close it, and then I come back and open the file to make more edits, I lose all my formatting if I'm in Excel. If you're using something like Notepad or Notepad++, for example, to edit, then you won't get that because it will keep the formatting, but Excel will wipe the formatting, so you'll need to make sure to go back in and, you know, change the created at, expires at, as needed, um, if you're going to save it again anyways. And same thing with like the amounts, making sure that those decimal formats are, are showing up correctly. Okay. <clears throat> and with that, you should be ready to import your uh, transaction CSV file because most of the optional columns here I discussed previously. Um, again, if you have any other questions about it, then then please let us know. Thanks.